All right, so I'm here with Nikki Ernest today, and she's gonna be talking about how she actually went from 300 a month to in the span of a month of starting her group coaching program, because she wanted to change from one-to-one -to, -one to group coaching. That was something that was super important to her. She actually got to $7,500 a month, and then even beyond that, as she's continued to grow, she realized, hey, you know, I am a mom, I do have things get busy, but because she set up systems in place, because of, she's laid such a solid foundation, she actually also made 5,000 a month last month as well, and cash collected, um, even though she says with herself that she did drastically less that month than other months too. So I'm super excited to talk to Nikki. She's gonna be giving us some insight on what she did, what she changed in her business, and how she actually got there. But I think at first, could you kind of give us an overview about your niche? You know, what niche are you in? So my niche is focused on women improving their relationship with food that maybe have dieted for years, mm -hmm. um, but still want to feel like they are focusing on health goals. So whether that's trying to um, improve their overall nutrition and feel kind of like they don't understand how because they've been dieting so for so long and they feel frustrated about knowing what they need to do for their body and so i've kind of helped with women who just kind of feel like the only route that they've known is dieting <laughs> and wow. they're at this turning point where they're like i just can't keep doing this anymore and i um want to improve my relationship with food but not only that i just i have to get myself healthy again I love it. I When we met, you already had figured out your niche at that point with mm -hmm. what you wanted to do. I think the big mm -hmm. thing for you was that you were feeling kind of bogged down by the one-to-one -one coaching, even though you're also saying it was kind of minimal. We weren't getting enough clients in that. But it was very difficult mm -hmm. to balance that and your life, too, Yes, was the big thing. Yes. So I think if next you could go into a little bit, like prior to us working together, back when you're in that mm -hmm. 300 a month range, $300 per month range, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of, can you give us a picture of what was going on in your business? And then also what was your biggest challenge at that point too? Yeah. So I'd always wanted to go out on my own and do my own thing. And so for the last four years, I've dabbled in different kind of, modality of, of that and um I did one-on-one -on -one coaching on a very minimal basis because I knew that I I knew time wise it wasn't going to work out sure. I only could see so many people in a day and my time was limited with with um uh, my I had one daughter at the time so I really needed something that could I could maximize my time with mm -hmm. and I knew one-on-one -on -one coaching wasn't going to be it so I continued to take clients as I was behind the scenes developing a course. And I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I knew that I wanted that to be a way to impact more people um, in a way that I could actually provide value to them without having to directly coach people one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And I had no idea what that would look like. So I tried to sell the course and it was, eh. <laughs> <laughs> so I got oh, really yeah, I gotta remember that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was about like a year into everything and then mm -hmm. the pandemic hit and I, it gave me a chance to really reflect and I got to a point where I felt like I can't, I don't know what I'm doing clearly like I I know the nutrition side of stuff but I just I kind of got to this point where I was like I'm just fed up and I really need help and I yeah. that's why I reached out to you awesome mm -hmm. awesome so I I think that for a lot of people it becomes confusing because you hear you hear like sell a course or something mm -hmm. like that too. So you build something and then you go out and try to sell it and you're like, oh wait, but now how do I sell this thing? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's like the theory of, oh, we're supposed to get time back by doing this sounds great, but then how do we actually go about selling this on a consistent basis? Oh, what does sure. that look like? Um, mm -hmm. You know, the client delivery, how do we make this so that something that people wanna buy Mm -hmm. Right. And so it <laughs> the idea of just the course becomes 10 times more complex than what we thought it was initially. Oh, yeah. And it was not connection with my clients at all. I mean, it was yeah. like someone would purchase it and then I wouldn't I couldn't see them through the transformation process. Mm -hmm. And that's not what I wanted. It felt way too distant. I wanted to sure. be working with people. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So now that you are where you are today, right, with your mm-hmm. business, what are the three changes that you made that you feel like allowed you to go from 300 a month to making 7,500 kind of in like your first month of actually working on selling uh, your group coaching program? And then fast forward to today and what you're doing now. Yeah. So I would say that it all comes down to everything that you've taught in, um, within your, um, grow your impact. I mean, it just, it Mm -hmm. took everything that I, it was like everything I needed to know in order (laughs) to understand, you know, how to talk to potential clients, what my business needed to look like on the back end to bring clients Mm -hmm. in that I just was doing things wrong or just like innocently was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, instead of wishing and hoping and just trying to be a presence on social media. There's so much more behind it. And so everything that you taught, I just started implementing in in the ways that I could and the hours that I could. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, it just started happening. It just started kind of snowballing. And then I been more intentional about my hours because now I have two little ones. Mm -hmm. And at the time I had one that was four months old. So like, it was very hit or miss of when I could get quiet time or like even just time. And so, but I knew if I just stuck to just, even if it's 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there, um, an hour here, it, I knew it would pay off going forward. And it did versus before it, nothing paid off because I wasn't doing things correctly or just didn't Mm -hmm. understand how. And so that's kind of how it got me to be where I am today is just being consistent, even if it's kind of sporadic, but then also just being diligent about applying the principles that you teach to kind of help you get there. So you feel like it was, you had more clarity around what you should be doing was a big thing. Oh, yes. And yes. then with the limited time you did have, you understood this is what I should be directing my energy towards to get clients. And mm-hmm. so it made it so much more simple, even though we're still always going to have limited time, right? Yeah. I figure mm-hmm. we might talk about that later about running a business as you're a mom of two, right? Mm-hmm. But also you felt like, okay, I've got this limited time, but now I know how to use it towards things that are actually beneficial oh, yeah. for my business rather mm-hmm. than maybe before you felt like I'm doing things, but I'm not sure if it's moving the business in the direction I want it to. Yes. I think knowing what I needed to do and what those daily actions needed to be was so helpful because it Mm. just, and just to see it pay off like within a day or two. I mean, where I was able to interact with potential clients so much more and, um, even just, it, it took like, it was like a breath of fresh air to know how to be genuine to me and also to my clients versus I felt like I was very stuck in like this business mode. And I was, I don't know, it was a very messy like mindset that I was in. And once I kind of walked through what you've taught, it really helped me to understand this is what I should be doing every single day and this in moving the needle forward. And it wasn't absolutely everything that I could be doing, but it was what, was Mm. moving the needle for me and what I could do in that moment. I felt like I had to take a moment and be like, okay, I can't do a hundred percent everything at this moment, but these things are helping me to just get this right now. And then I'll focus on a little bit more later and a little bit more later. And that was what the, was so amazing to me. I didn't have to do everything all at once. (laughs) Right. (laughs) (laughs) It felt like it was more of like, okay, these are the high nails. Right? Here's there's yes. some other things that can help us grow, but we got to just focus on the high nails and then mm-hmm. we can, that seems manageable, right? And so suddenly yes. it's not as overwhelming because I think that's yes. something that also happens a lot of times when you're trying to run your business and you have your life too, is it can start to feel very mm-hmm. overwhelming because it's like, well, I got this giant list of things to do. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. Now... Let's count that as two because we felt like we got clarity on a plan. We figure out time management of how we should be at best using our time. Mm-hmm. What's the third thing you'd say you changed that made the biggest difference? My mindset around um, my own success and just my mindset around 
what I need to do in order to make it work. Um, Mm -hmm. I think when you're not seeing results, it's really difficult to kind of keep pushing. And so that's why I got to that point where I was like, clearly I can't do this anymore on my own. And I need, I need a coach to help me through this. And then after that, I think building resilience and realizing like, um, you're on your own path. There's no one else you need to compare yourself to as far yeah. as like how quickly you move. Um, mm-hmm. I think my nature is, has always been to compare myself to other people when they've started or whatnot. Yeah. And this process has really helped me just to be like, you're just focused on you and like, look how much you've accomplished and how exactly. great it feels and how great it feels to be building something that's a substantial you know, support for your family and, and for yourself to just feel accomplished. And so I think that's really been the biggest mindset shift. Mm. Even my husband's like, wow, like this just seems like you are so much more like in your own element. And I love like, it. Yeah, I can tell. Just, yeah. That was great. But so I think just that mindset around comparing yourself to other success was just like, I was like, okay, I don't have time for that anymore because it just, it'll only bog me down. Right. But then also just believing in myself more. I think going through a lot of that mindset change through this process has really helped me to just focus on the important stuff that matters to me and kind of take away all that um, stress or, or whatnot that was around um, in my own head. Yeah, I think that's also common. And I know I used to really deal with this too, where I would always compare myself to what other people were doing Mm-hmm. But all the time I'd be like, what are they doing that they're being so successful? And how did they get there so fast? And here I am. And then mm-hmm. I wasn't even looking at my own success. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I wasn't even looking at what I was doing about how I was helping people. Cause I was always concentrated on what they were doing. Yeah. And you know what mm-hmm. they were doing? Concentrating on themselves and their yeah, clients. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so we find that once we actually shift our focus to us, right. Mm-hmm. And our clients, that our own business will take off more because we're not over there like looking, you know, it's really difficult yes. to drive forward if you're constantly looking over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. It's really, it's really challenging. And also you just feel better too. Mm-hmm. And I think that's when you okay. come into your own kind of, cause a lot of self doubt, I would say comes mm-hmm. from this comparison thing. Of what are they doing? So maybe I should be doing what they're doing. Suddenly when you're focused on you, you Mm -hmm. have your own unique voice. You have your own unique marketing message. You're working on how Mm -hmm. you work with clients, their results. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, this is just what I do. And this is how I do it. And I feel good about it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think it just, it, it, you, when you kind of return that focus to yourself, you're way more able to look at your own processes of what you need to change to be more successful for yourself. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, there was just no point. I think I just got to that point where I was like, there's no point in looking, like you said, to the side, they're yeah. going to move at a different pace and that's their own pace. I'm and like, that's their own great. pace and that's fine. And everybody's going through their own thing. Right. Yeah. And everybody's mm-hmm. different and that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we shouldn't be like, oh, what are they doing? I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm crappy because yeah. I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. Right? That's yeah. silly. I think I used to use them as like a marker of like, okay, if they did that, then I need to be able to do that by yep. then. And then that just, I was like, that's got to go in the trash. <laughs> I want to be successful. <laughs> exactly. 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 And then it's so funny that you start doing better because you're no longer so focused on what they're doing. Exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So what is, for people who are feeling kind of stuck in their business, let's say, okay, or maybe Mm -hmm. they're thinking of starting, but they're feeling stuck on what to do. What would you give them as kind of like a piece of advice for them? I think it's, my piece of advice would be, it's normal to be stuck, like going through moments of time you're gonna feel stuck or things that's just kind of the name of the game and it's not bad Mm -hmm. it's just I I think of it as more like right before I joined you I always had in the back of my mind like I just can't do it so like if you keep running into a situation where you feel like it's the same problem seeking help for that sooner rather than later because then you just can get over it if it feels like you're just stuck with 
you know, I think outsourcing your ability to change is, is important. Like yeah. I had to go to someone in order to be, to be better. And for the hardest time I had to swallow that humble pie that I just couldn't figure it out. Or it was so painful. I was like, I just need to be able to get there faster. And that's what I want. That will make me happy if I can just get there faster or it'll help me stick around longer if I could get there faster. Yeah. So outsourcing ways that I just couldn't, I could fall short. But then also just realizing like there's going to be pause moments because it's life and it's not it's not bad sometimes it's just a pause because it's a pause and it passes and then you get to the other side and you're you you know I agree I agree and I think too what you're talking about because I've even seen this in my own business is that sometimes what we see is like this stuck problem or I think even your goal was to get to five thousand a month in six months Mm -hmm. right that yeah. was your goal, and you got there way faster. <laughs> you got <above> that <laughs> way faster, right? <laughs> but we feel like that's so distant and far away because we're we don't see, mm-hmm. right? And so sometimes, yeah. even with myself, sometimes you have to speak to someone who's just a little bit higher up on the mountain because they yeah. can see a little bit better from yeah. up there than what we mm-hmm. can see, mm-hmm. right? Oh yeah. I agree. I think that and just, yeah, just keep focusing on the daily tasks you need to do and you'll get there. Like it's, it's, it's not an overnight thing. And by any means, it's a quick thing, but it's not an overnight thing. (laughs) Sure. Sure. With, yeah, it's not an overnight thing. It still requires work. I'm sure Nikki would agree with that. (laughs) You didn't have any magical buttons in your house where you pushed. There are no magical buttons. (laughs) <laughs> oh, but I think too I wanted to tie this back because you were talking about the life stuff comes up right and mm-hmm. I was thinking if you could talk a little bit because I know that there's a lot of women who either follow me or watch my YouTube videos and they're also mothers and they're worried about or maybe not worried but they really want to prioritize their family but they also want to build a business and mm-hmm. can you talk a little bit about because that was a big thing for you too right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what that's been like for you, you know? And Mm -hmm. then kind of maybe like we already gave some advice, but you know, I I feel like this is a different topic. So what you kind of did that's helped you the most with doing that. Yeah. So I think it was a learning process in the beginning. I think when I being, um, you know, I have been a clinical dietitian before and from what I wanted to do now And I was so focused on like making sure there were scheduled hours every day. And with kids, sometimes that works, (laughs) sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so I, for the, for the longest time felt like if I didn't have that work schedule, I couldn't work. And we went through some crazy stuff where it wasn't anything bad, but it was like my husband ended up traveling a ton. We were living with my in-laws trying to close on our current house. Um, We were living out in the middle of nowhere with like horrible Wi-Fi and cell service. I mean, it was just like, I I finally had to get to this point where I got frustrated because I I wasn't moving at the pace that in my heart, I felt like I just want to move. And I thought it was all these external things like, it's this, it's this, it's this. And then I realized like, I just have By to By external do... things, you probably mean like niche, what you're charging, things like that. Was that some of the stuff you started questioning when you're saying no, external things? No, I started things, just like... like getting, I started letting all of those like, we're in a move, we're in a hard situation, kind of like oh. keep me from, from being consistent with my efforts. And so mm. I like- was I'm glad like, I specified that. Yeah, and so I like, decided I, I was just had this moment where I was kind of letting all of that stress of being a mom and taking care of the kids and and whatnot kind of like be the reason I wasn't showing up the way that I wanted and then I just had this mental point that's like there's never gonna be this like in this situation in this time frame where maybe business is or your life's a little stressful that's gonna be good so you just kind of have to do it anyway yeah and I just wanted to say like let's just try it let's just do it anyway and we'll see what happens. And then like, it was crazy. I went from like a stall week or that pause I'm talking about where you have yep. to weather the storm to like my calendar being full. And I was like, okay, this is crazy. We're gonna go for it. And so yeah, it, I think it just showed me like, I can still, I can still hold myself back out of fear of not um, 
of needing things to be perfect when I oh I love it I'm home and that's okay yeah. and that's what I wanted and so and then also being a mom just wanting to be there for my kids I've really prioritized like when I'm working I'm I'm going to work but as soon as I'm done with that little because I work in like two hour time blocks during one nap time <laughs> and then at, at night and that's my that's my system and so I, mm-hmm. I set aside those times and I'm super intentional about my business and when the, that time's done I'm done and then I'm focused on my kids and I'm there for them I think and that's it, important right, yeah and it, it works and it I don't feel like I'm missing out and they don't feel like I'm missing out or they're missing out they they understand and having that balance, I think, was a, a mindset thing for me of not feeling guilty about during this time, I'm focused on my business because mm-hmm. 90% of the rest of their day, they have me. It was being more intentional about those time slots that I can make work and not letting external factors kind of influence like my ability to keep working. I had to kind of just say, we're making this work because you deserve it and you have wanted this. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's such an important thing. Even if, you know, you aren't a mom, sometimes when your life, like, things keep coming at you, you're like, because all this stuff keeps coming at me, I can't do anything because I, exactly. there's so much going on. I just can't do it, right? Mm-hmm. And then you come yeah. to a point where you're like, well, when is this perfect <laughs> moment of stillness going to happen? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so <laughs> then you're like, well... It's more, I think you learned, okay, I need to be intentional and block off certain times to use, right, for mm-hmm. this. And then realize that things are going to pop up and I'm just going to have to figure out how to navigate through them. It was mm-hmm. a big thing, it sounds like for you. Yeah, and that was 100%. It. Yeah, and there weren't, there were days where, you know, a kid was missing a nap and I had a phone call and I'd be like, okay, we're going on a walk. And it was like, it was, it was something to me that was so not that that's an ideal situation, right? <laughs> but I was still enrolling clients on a phone call <laughs> while walking my daughter. And it was just this moment where I was like, I can, th- I can do this. Like, this I love it, Nikki. Know. That's so great. That's yeah. so great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you posted um, one time about that. Work. You're like giving your daughter something to eat while you're on a call. <laughs> so oh, <snacks>, like, I-, <laughs> I mean, that's so great. Oh, so what? Are, where do you see kind of the future of where you'd like to move in future months, maybe with your mm-hmm. business? Yeah. So now I have, um, I got to this point in my business. It's been a very intentional step for my husband and I to um, get some help in the house for a couple hours a day so that mm. I can be more focused. And part of that was getting to a certain point in my business where we, I, Financially, that makes sense. And okay. it always makes sense because when you're buying time, you're buying all of that. And right. so I had, that was another mindset of like, if I pay for help for a couple hours a day, it's going to push my business forward. And that's what I want. And that was yeah. my choice. Um, and that's what kind of I'm looking forward to. And so looking forward now that kind of that storm has passed, who knows what's in the future. <laughs> I know. But I'm looking forward to hitting consistently like, 10k plus months and that's been something that is a year goal for me but i i like to achieve goals faster that's always been my like mindset is like okay i put that out there but now i want to achieve it sooner so Mm. if that happens great if not that's okay too um i'm here for the ride but i'm very excited about just being like being able to dive in more to um other areas that i can grow my business now that i have a bit more time and focus and we're not in a big transition. I'm looking forward to just helping more people. I think when I look at what I've grown now, it's been um, overwhelmingly cool to see the community that's grown. And I'm just really excited to see that continue to grow as well. Um, So yeah, that's my my short term goal is 10k by the end of the year because I joined like December 31st. So by the end of the year, I would like to consistently be heading hitting 10k months um with the goal to maybe even do a bit more we'll see i love it nikki i think that's Mm -hmm. great i think you can definitely do it you have like six months (laughs) my gosh like remember at the beginning of the year like i like to hit 5,000 a month (laughs) that happened you know you got this it's gonna happen nikki 
Yeah. We're going to check it again. It's going to be like, Nikki's at 15000 a month. And she's... <laughs> You know, crazy, but yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right, Nikki, thank you so much for speaking with us. I'm sure this was super helpful for everybody to hear. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks, Nikki. I appreciate you. Do-